Okay, and welcome back students taking financial accounting. And we're working on the chapter two short exercises and we're picking up with number 11 where we left off. Okay, um, and this one is very similar to the uh, short exercise, the one we just finished the previous video, 2-10, where all we're doing here is um, making journal entries. It says, after operating for a month, Rosanna's, uh, Rosa Anderson's dental practice completed the following transactions. Um, so these are the, the transactions, and it says, use the steps outlined in the five-step transaction analysis. Record the transactions in the journal. And as I said in the previous video, you know, go ahead and use the five-step transaction analysis from the textbook and work through them. Um, but I don't use that method. I uh, use what I'm going to present here, okay, or in the previous video. Uh, use whichever one that you want. They're both right. They both come out with the same thing. It's just what makes more amount of sense to you, what's more comfortable for you, okay? All right, so we're going to start out with uh, September 3. The business borrowed 35000 from the bank, signing a note payable. All right, so the date is 9-3. Okay, so they're borrowing thirty-five thousand from the bank. You know, um, does this transaction affect cash? That's the first question I ask myself. The second question is, does this affect accounts receivable or accounts payable? Okay. So, if I ask myself, does this affect cash? You know, the answer is yes because I'm borrowing thirty-five thousand. Well, my cash is increasing, so I increase my cash on the debit side. For thirty-five thousand, debits have to equal credits, so I have to credit something else for thirty-five thousand. Well, what? Okay, um, I'm signing a note payable. Debit a credit to note payable. Now, note payable is a liability, and remember, we're in. You know, so if I was looking at my chart of accounts, um, I could just pick out. You know, I would look under the liability accounts. And I would find the uh, general ledger account called note payable, and I would make that as the uh, uh, the journal entry that, for the description of the account. Okay. All right. Erasing this. Next one. Uh, nine nine. Perform services for patients on account. You know. For 12.50. So, am I affecting cash? No. If I'm not affecting cash, I ask, am I affecting accounts receivable or accounts payable? You know, both of those are, you know, you deal with. They're represented as on account, on credit. Receivable is when you have a customer owing you, and payable is when you have a vendor when you owe, you know, a vendor. You're buying from somebody else, so you're performing services for patients. So you're performing the service, that means they're going to owe you the money on account, all right? So if it's not affecting cash, is it affecting receivables or payables? Well, you know, the, the customer is going to owe you, so I'm going to debit accounts receivable. Why? Because, you know, you're increasing your, you know, uh, your receivables. You're increasing what they owe you, okay? You're increasing how much is, you know, the customers owe you. And you do that on the debit side because accounts receivable is just like cash. It's an asset. So how you think about cash is how you think about accounts receivable. So that's for 12, 000, uh, 1250 And I have to credit something else. And it's service, perform services. So that would be service revenue for twelve fifty. Okay. And that's the journal entry. Going to erase it. Two receivables or payables on account, and this is for a customer, and this is for a vendor. Remember, accounts receivable is just like cash. The way you think about cash is the way you think about accounts receivable. Accounts payable is the opposite of accounts receivable. It's two sides to the same coin. So if you, you know, when you're associating this, you don't have to memorize what accounts, how to do accounts payable. 
you think about accounts receivable and then just do the opposite. Okay. All right. 916. Received cash on account from patients. Okay. So we're receiving cash on account. Right. Go down through your order. All right. The order that I'm listing. I ask myself, am I affecting cash? The answer is yes. But notice I'm also affecting on account, all right, which would be a receivable or a payable, right? Um, it's easy to get confused, but you know, because which one do I start out with? Start out with the cash, okay? Cash is the easiest, right? So if I'm receiving cash, that means I'm going to debit my cash for 500, and that means I have to credit something else. Well, if it's on account, it's going to be a receivable or a payable. And if I'm receiving it, that means the customer is paying me, so it has to be an accounts receivable for 500. Okay, so I am backing into the credit for the accounts receivable. I don't have to think about whether that accounts receivable is debited or credited if I go down the order of asking about, you know, asking the question, am I affecting cash first, and then asking. Do I affect accounts receivable or accounts payable? I'm erasing it. All right, 22, 9.22. Received the utility bill 380, which will be paid during October. Okay, so am I affecting cash? No, because I'm not paying it until October. Right. So then I ask, am I affecting receivables or payables? Well, if I receive the bill, that means I'm going to owe it. Right. So that means um, uh, it's going to be an accounts payable. And I increase the accounts payable. Right. Remember, because I have a certain amount here, and now I receive the bill, so that increases what I owe by 380. Well, accounts payable is a liability account, and I increase my liability accounts on the credit side. So I'm going to have an account a credit to accounts payable for 380 and I debit something else. Well, what am I paying? I'm paying the utility bill. Okay. That's part of the normal operation of the business. Okay. And since it's money going out, if I look underneath my expense accounts, I'll see utility expense. And I debit utility expense for $380. Okay. Um, it's just that simple. Erasing it. Uh, uh, 9.30. Paid the monthly salary to the dental assistant for 22.50. Okay, so am I debiting? I'm sorry. Am I affecting cash? Yes, because I'm paying the monthly salary. Well, is my you know so I'm affecting cash? Is it increasing or decreasing? Well, if I'm paying it out, it's decreasing. So I have a credit to cash for $22.50. Now all I need to do, you know, debits have to equal credit, so I have to debit something else. And what am I paying for? Uh, I'm paying a monthly salary, so I have to debit salary expense. Okay, because it's an expense for the operation of the business. And notice because I'm thinking through the process. I didn't have to decide whether salary expense was a debit or credit. If I had gone and started with the second part and was trying to figure out monthly salary, I'd have to figure that out, and then I'd still be trying to figure out what to do with cash. I'm doing twice the amount. I'm making twice the amount of decisions than I actually need to make. Okay, so that's the entry. And then for the last one, 930, paid interest expense of 170 on the bank loan. Okay, so I have debits and credits. You know, am I affecting cash? Yes, because I'm paying $170 for the interest expense. Well, I'm decreasing my cash, so we know that's a credit for 170. And by now you should be, you know, you should have this cash memorized. De you know, increases it's a debit, decreases it's a credit. Okay, and if I credit it for 170, I have to debit something else. What am I uh, debiting? Interest expense, because that's what I'm paying on the bank loan as part of the operation of the business, and that's all there is to it.
Okay. Now I went through a lot of explanation for all of the, for these entries, but the reality is is that um, you know once you get in the habit of thinking like this, it becomes easier and easier. You become more and more internalized, and these journal entries become rather quick. Okay. I you know I spent 10 minutes doing this exercise, which it's telling me 10 to 15 minutes. The reality is is I probably could have made all of these journal entries in five minutes or less. Okay. But that's because I have the experience and you know, I've internalized that stuff, right? And you'll get to that point too, right? So in the next video, we'll pick up with 2-12. Uh,